Today we're going to talk about how to fish the fluke style lure. This is an awesome lure that I love to use to catch many different species such as largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, pike family fish like pickerels, heck does even catch bowfins and snakeheads. So yeah this is an awesome lure, it's very effective for bank fishermen who like to fish on the shorelines and I like to use this lure from early spring all the way throughout to the end of fall, right before winter hits. As I said, this is one of my favorite lures. I'm gonna break down this video into a couple sections. I'm gonna first talk about one, what are fluke style lures, two, how to fish them, and third, I'm gonna talk about how to rig this lure. This section is actually gonna be very detailed because I wanna share with you guys a secret that I use, the ferret knot that I like to tie in order to make this lure super duper effective, and also I'm gonna share with you guys the number one mistake when people do when they tie this knot. So make sure you guys pay attention, watch to the very end. Let's first talk about what is the fluke style lure. So here you go, this is the zoom fluke right here. As you can see, it's almost like a stick bait here, but it has a little bit of contour right here. So it's shaped like some sort of a bait fish uh, resemblance. And below, you can see there's a captivity here for you, for you to hide the hook. Many different companies make this. This one is made by Zoom, and it has some salt impregnated into it. Uh, there's other ones that's uh, cheaper that you see from uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Here's uh, Big Bites. It looks like a little bigger profile, a little thicker in the body. It comes different colors. And uh, there's actually another one that's really, really cool. I have a Z-Man right here, and they make them into like crazy plastics, as you can see. This stuff stretched like crazy, so if you're actually fishing things that have like crazy bite force and sharp teeth like Northern Snakehead or Bullseye Snakehead, this is actually a good lure to use from the Z-Man product. The only issue with Z-Man product is you don't want to mix it with any other plastics because they will melt. Section 2 of this video, we are now talk about how to fish this lure. In my personal experience, this lure is best to fish when it's weightless or if you really need to add a little bit of weight. Very little weight actually does better than heavy weights. With that said, this lure excels in fishing shallow water or in some sort of weed bed. If you have like deep water, you have some weeds and you have like some sort of gap, this is a perfect lure to fish that little gap area. This is also why I said it's a very good lure for bank fishermen because most of the time when fishing in banks, you'll be fishing shallow water. You guys can fish this in open water, in uh, rocky areas, you can fish it in weeds. I love to fish this lure around weeds and in the weeds. Skip this lure under docks and trees as well. You can fish this just about anywhere. So let's talk about how to fish this lure. Obviously this is a soft plastic twitch bait or jerk bait so the best way to fish this is what some sort of action with rod tip that will cause this lure to dart. If you want to fish this lure high in the water column imitating feeding fish you can use the walk the dog action which is a constant twitch of your rod tip and uh, you want to give slack line after each twitch so it actually swims side to side like a zigzag. I actually use this action the most, especially when the fish are super duper active. Sometimes you may have to slow it down just a little bit, so you'd be twitch, let it drop just a little bit, twitch, drop a little bit. You gotta figure that out when you're out there fishing. Yeah, vary your speed a little bit, but just keep it moving high in the water column, whether it's top water or just a couple inches subsurface in a water column. So the next uh, type of retrieve is, I like to call it the, the dying bait fish. And what I like to do is I like to twitch this guy and just let it sink slowly. And that slow sink and then the twitch that pulls it back up in the water column and fall right back down, that imitates an injured and dying bait fish. Uh, again, you wanna vary your speed doing that. And sometimes I really like to do, a, instead of a twitching, just a, a small pull, I actually do a big sweep. So it actually swims very far in the water but after that, you want to let it drop back down again. Now, that looks like an injured fish that is escaping. So uh, yeah, sometimes you do that, you can trigger the fish while it's actually running and then also when it's actually falling. So yeah, you want to make sure you pay attention to your line. Lastly, not a lot of people do this, but I like to dead stick the zoom fluke. The fluke style lure is very similar to the single lure. It's a, basically a stick bait, uh, but with a little different profile, imitate some uh, uh, some bait fish. So uh, yeah, not a lot of people do this, dead sticking it. But yeah, I like to cast this into like structure, uh, skip it underneath docks and just let it fall. You know, let it fall to the bottom, wait a little bit and you just lift your rod tip, let it go up the water column and just let it sink again and dead stick again. Like when it's super duper slow, especially after those cold fronts, sometimes you gotta cast it right into some sort of structure and just let it sit there. All right, we're finally at the last section. So uh, make sure you pay attention because I'm gonna first talk about the easy stuff of rigging. Then I'm gonna talk about the complicated stuff and some mistakes that some people make. So pay attention. So. Uh, let's talk about rigging this. Again, so far you guys have heard the entire video is fishing is weightless and the best way to fish a weightless fluke is you gotta fish it weedless. So I have right here is a 4 aught Gamagatsu extra wide gap and this is a super line version because uh, I want to have the thicker 
wire here because a lot of times I'm fishing places with uh, bigger fish, fish that have strong jaws like snakeheads, and I want to make sure I'll be able to have a good hook set. So I want that thicker, thicker wire right here. Plus when they death throw, they wouldn't bend out the hook. So yeah, we have this hook right here. You know, here's the point, here's the eye, the bend. You know, all you do is Texas rig it. And if you guys don't know how to Texas rig it, what I like to do is I take this point right here, I insert it to the nose of the fluke, like about three, four, uh, three fourths of the way up the point. Then I pull it out of the bottom of the lure. And for zoom flukes, the bottom of the lure had this little captivity right here. And then slide the lure up the shank and through the eye of the lure and then twist it so that the bend, the bottom of the hook, is actually at the bottom of your lure. Now, next thing you want to do is align your, your hook and your lure right underneath the little fold captivity and you want to pinpoint exactly where the end of your hook meets the lure. That's where you need to penetrate your point of your hook through the lure. So what you want to do now is bend this lure backwards, put the hook through, and reposition it and there you have it. This is how you rig a fluke. Now if you're fishing in weedy areas or you're skipping under trees and docks, make sure you guys adjust it and bury the hook so that it's completely weedless. If you're fishing in open areas, you can leave it exposed because uh, having it exposed, you have a better hook set and also the lure doesn't get destroyed as quick. If you bury this, usually typically it rips a lot quicker and um, it won't be weedless anymore. All right, so here's the money of this video. This is the knot that you want to use when tying this lure. And you want to tie a type of loop knot. I like to use the craze loop knot. And the loop knot allows this lure to swing a lot better because it's not tied directly onto a line. It has a little wiggle room with that little loop. Have you guys ever wondered why crankbaits have a split ring? So let's take a look at this for a second. Here's a crankbait. See that split ring? That split ring actually allows the lure to wobble a lot more. See that? It's just wobbling and I'm holding down the lure. Now, if I were to tie it not directly onto the lure, it's not gonna wiggle as much, okay? Especially if it's on tight line. And that's why crankbait comes with a split ring. It creates more wobbles. So tying a loop knot onto the fluke lure will actually give it more motion, allow it to swing a lot easier. So if you wanna walk the dog with this, it's gonna walk so much easier. Here's the thing, there's actually one additional movement that people don't even know about, and we call this secondary motion. And that would trigger fish to bite with those secondary motions. So what is that secondary motion in this lure? Pull this thing through the water and then as it's going through the water, you give it a slack line. What happened is when this lure slows down, it actually does a little wobble. Does a little wobble. That's the secondary motion I was talking about and that triggers fish. So yeah, you guys gotta give this a try. You know, rip it from the bottom, it's a climb up, it hits the apex and it's gonna wobble. If you have any lures that's like bright color or have glitter like this guy right here has some glitter, it's gonna flash a little bit more and make those fish react to that little wobble and it's gonna strike that lure. All right guys, here's the second money part of this video and it is the number one mistake people make when tying any sort of loop knots. In fact, I made this mistake as well and my good friend Roger from Cooking Fishing, you guys can check out a video that talks about this or because you guys can check out in the description below. But uh, basically, let me show you. So I have. 20 pound test line right here, mono test line. Here's a big loop. The number one mistake people make is making too big of a loop when tying any sort of loop knots, okay? So here's a big loop. If you notice, when I'm pressing this with my finger, it's actually very soft. When I'm tapping this down, you can see it bends so easily. The integrity, the structural integrity of the circle is weak. What does that equate to? Well, when you actually have this lure tied onto right here, as you see, it bends very easily and eventually, uh, it's not even a circle, it's not even a loop anymore, so it does not have the room to wiggle or wobble properly. Now, let's shrink this loop down a lot more into, let's say, right here. Super duper small. You guys could probably say that this is small as, uh, probably double the size of this, um, the eye of this hook right here, okay? Maybe, it'll tr maybe triple, it doesn't matter. As long as it's very small. I'm tapping this, I'm tapping this. It's, it's not moving. The, the structural integrity of a smaller loop knot is a lot stronger than when it's actually bigger. So, the key is you want to tie your loop knots as small as possible, but still big enough that it can swing. Other things to consider is the thickness or the diameter of your line. The thinner it is, 
the weaker your loop gonna be. You definitely wanna make your loop as small as possible in that case, or you guys could use thicker line. For bass fishermen and stuff like that, I like to typically recommend um, 14 pounds and up. You could definitely get away with 12 pounds, if, especially if you're not using any sort of heavy lures. In fact, for zoom fluke, you are fishing it weightless, so typically 12 pounds should be able to do it, but if you're not too good at tying those knots, 14 pounds would work. I personally use 20 pound test line. I like to fish places with toothy critters like pickerels and snakeheads, so I use 20 pounds. I like to use braided line as my main line because you get to put more braided line on a spool because the diameter of braided line is just so much thinner, which will allow you to cast super duper far. And when you cast a lure super duper far, if you're using like lines that have a lot of stretch, you might not have a good hook set which is why braid comes in handy there. Braid have no stretch, so you'll be able to set the hook when you have the lure cast out at your maximum distance. So make sure you guys pick your leader material. Again, I like to have something between uh, 14 to 20 pounds. And if you guys want the lure to stay higher in the ward column, use mono. If you guys want it to sink down, use floral. I hope you have enjoyed this how-to video. If so, please give me a like. If you have any tips for me of fishing the Zoom Fluke or any Fluke style lures, go ahead and leave me a comment below. If this is your first time watching my videos, please consider subscribing as I will have a lot more fishing videos and how-to videos to help you guys improve your fishing game. Until next time, tight lines guys, hopefully you guys will catch a lot more fish using fluke style lures.